fact, ladies and gentlemen, to King Win 2015, we've just had an amazing match between Savage and Zixo. Control Warrior mirror match, especially at the very end, was really intense with top decks from both players back to back, to back to back to back. So that was really, uh, really intense. Now, the next opponents we're going to be casting are uh, RDU versus Orange. Both yeah. of the players, as I mentioned, pretty tough, uh, pretty tough spot in this league so far. So they both want to get the win pretty severely. Well, Orange is 0-4. He's like craving for the win. That's that's the. I think that's his last chance to salvage the situation. Yeah, there's a total of nine matches per player, which means if he gets a loss here, he's gonna be guaranteed to have below 50% win rate in the entire KPL, which as a result means that it's gonna be probably very difficult for him to get into the play. Well, you know, the playoffs are probably the way out, are but way out of the game exactly. Anyway. But he could still go up to 5-4. And, you know, if, mm -hmm. if Life Coach or Strive Crow goes 4-5, then suddenly Orange is at the top, right? But yeah. there's um, there, there, the there's chance a of that of is slim. And it's mostly going to be, you know, he's mostly playing at this point to get reinvited to Season 2 because KPL is not a one-time thing. We're going to have a second season, which is going to have open qualifiers. So that's going to be interesting. The last, you know, the, the few last slots of this season are going to be opened up for an open qualifier. So you will get a few... Uh, Hopefully new blood, uh, but then again, we've seen pros qualify through qualifiers a lot of the time in past tournaments. Mm -hmm. So we'll see exactly what happens. On this note, the lineups, we have them. It's RDU with Hunter, Paladin and Rogue. Orange with Druid, Hunter and Rogue. So we see two Hunter classes and Rogue. Yep. being present with both players, Hunter and Rogue. But uh, I would assume that both players are playing different Hunters. Yeah. Orange is more seen with the Midrand Hunter and RDU most likely Well, okay, RDU can go with both. I see him I've seen him I have seen him play way different builds of Hunter any at any time of the game, so can't really predict which which type of hunter will be will it be. And uh, the paladin from RDU. That's interesting. It, it it might be very good pick against the druid from Orange. Actually, Paladin is uh, its not a staple class, but it's definitely one that I like a lot. In this specific case, though, we're looking at Orange's lineup. If Orange is playing, you know, if he's switching up his game and he's playing Face Hunter, which, you know, is not exactly the most common thing, but if he is, he's got Rogue and Face Hunter to handle a Paladin, that's going to be pretty good for him. And Face Hunter is also notably good against Rogue and against a possible mid range Hunter. So. Either of these players, I think whoever brought Face Hunter is going to have a pretty good feel. He's going to have a field day, essentially. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so we'll have to see if one of them brought it. I wouldn't be surprised if they did. RDU is going to be playing Hunter first. Yeah. And Orange is going to be playing as Rogue. So now it depends. Which type yep. of Rogue is it? The, the most Debra. popular Hunter is now Face Hunter. So I will assume it, it, it's they have the, the SM Org Hunter. But the rogue, you know, with backspace rogue, they can actually outrace a hunter because they have the ability to use cold bloods, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know they've got a lot of burst damage as well. I remember those games coming down to very specific plays, and the rogue would sometimes hold on to the cold light just to get the lethal, where she would cold light and immediately find something she needed to go face. And sometimes the hunter's forced into a defensive position. The drawback is. The Hunter has Unleash, and he's got Explosive Trap, which gives him a bit of an edge as far as racing for pure board presence. Yeah, I agree with, I agree wholeheartedly with you about what you said uh, yeah. about the matchup, but this would require Orange to play the aggressive Rogue, and he's known for playing the Control Rogue, or the yep. Sharp Sword or, or Rogue, control, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And, um, well, Sixo from Archon was playing the aggressive rogue anyway, right? So maybe they will share. No, they not. They they won't. <laughs> we just they will share their deck. Yeah, they won't share the deck. So we'll be jumping into the game shortly, and you will know in a second why did I say that. Yeah, I mean Hunter. I don't. I don't think uh, there's any surprise at this point that Face Hunter is probably one of the better decks. Wow. Out there so the game. wait, what? So see deck and then Hunter. Did I see yeah. that? Yep. Lave Zuka, Eagle Horn Bows, ladies and gents. Pump up the value. Also, he can do what he wants because the pirate is free, so. So, what do we do here? Hunted Creeper? Yeah, I don't dislike it, but Knife Juggler is probably a bit better for pressure. Well, it kind of sucks that it backs up and it will be top decked right now. Nope. 
almost. Zero mana to seven, that's almost the same. Whoa, well, a sap this early. Ouch. If you see this sap at a instead of a backstab, you just replay it, right? Yeah, I think so. Otherwise, oh, backstab. Second would... bow. The bow is the most important card against the rogue. It basically says deal at least six points of damage. It's and that's guaranteed insane. damage output, yeah. yeah. Farsi oh, not heal any points of damage. That's that's gonna be hurtful. Now you got the bow to trade for the Farseer. This is yeah. a perfect outcome here for RDU. Gets the trade. The juggler sticks around. The Belcher is not even ready to come down. Orange Unless is gonna have to be find an, an agent or backstab. Oh, agent. Okay, so you now prep into agent, right? It's still horrible. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's awful. Because then you trade it into the second uh, durability point of the um, of the bow, and you still leave... Oh, he's just gonna fetch a backstab, never mind. I can't really blame him, okay. I think that's a great idea, in fact, because you're spending way too many resources on one SI. What about not getting the backstab here? And well, he... I mean, it sucks, but you could get Fan of Knives with Blood Mage next turn. I think it's, it's a payoff you have to try to take. Oh my god! Goodness, RDU, look at that cancer. Well, I think I just metastasized. <laughs> well, there's one one little problem for RDU. There's a Belcher. Right. Um, but there's probably a Hoot Hoot. Actually, if a Belcher falls down... <clears throat> sorry about that. If a Belcher falls down, he can deal with it with his current board, right? Yeah, he can deal with it, but, you know, he kind of trades his both one ones. Uh, what about Talnos and uh, Agent instead of Vulture? That That's sucks. not a bad idea. It's, uh, uh, it su I think it sucks, anyway. Both plays suck. I mean, if you're facing Face Hunter as a rogue, none of the plays you make are gonna feel good until you get an anti heal bot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So... I mean, you pick, the, pick your poison, effectively. Not deadly poison. No, not that. Well, I mean, you could. It would have been great against that juggler, mind you. Now that we talk about the deadly prep, uh, prep, prep, sap, sap belcher. That's mm, not prep, sap, belcher. Yeah, that's not bad. Prep, sap, si. Mm, Into blood mate. Prep, the white. sap, si. Actually, prep, sap, belcher. Yeah, prep, sap, si agent. That's not terrible. What else are you gonna sap? A wolf rider? I don't think so. Hmm. Right. Yeah, that's true. You play maybe now, you, you get a Belcher to... next turn, and you get the trade first. Nah, you want to keep the prep. Yeah. You have to keep the prep for the Belcher turn. At least. No, the... if, you, if you play it now, I mean, he plays, he, if he replays the Leper Gnome, you can trade your Blood Mage into it. So you're probably happy to use it now and then get a good Belcher on the following turn. I like Orange's line of play, but he's really on the defensive here. RDU finds a bit more damage, which he's just going to throw on the board. Hero power. Do you kill the agent? Or just deal three points of damage to the face? It I might like backfire. trading the agent, but oh, if you go full phase, Now you're... it will backfire really badly for RDU. Will it? He's got a R he's got bow plus South Sea plus the abusive. How much does it backfire? Well, if you top deck say kill command, it doesn't. Kill command bow. Does it? Does it even backfire now? I don't think it does. I mean, it well, kind of does, but not really. You have to play bow. Attack the into South Belcher sea. with South Sea. Then you know, and buff up the abusive creeper. sergeant. Yeah. I think you're good. Y you lose two points of damage though. Leroy, you don't have unleashed. So I don't think you get that done. You have to keep that. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Well, let's see if Orange plays more healing. That's what I'm curious about. How much of those Earthen Rings and Antique Heal Bots have made their way into Orange's list? That's kind you of know, what I want to know at this point. You know what's funny? One Belcher might win the game. One more, right? Or I no, think no, even this Belcher. one. Even this one can win the game. Because it's 7 damage tanked? Yeah. 
like Leroy next turn would have been almost basically guaranteed lethal because you wouldn't be mana inefficient with your place now. Yeah. Oh man, if a fan of knives comes out, but no, sword, that's no. not bad. That's definitely not the worst draw you could have you could have gotten because you want to race Hunter at some point of the game. And RTU is playing to Blade Flurry so hard, but I guess at this point it doesn't matter. Yeah, you have to go all in. Well, that's basically what Face Hunter does, right? All in. Yeah, never fold. So you kill. What? Kill everything. You use the eviscerate? Nah, I don't think so. Right? Just eviscerate on the two one sounds like value. I mean, everything has one health anyway, so uh, you're still just gonna kill all the one ones. How many points of damage do you have next turn? Four, seven, eight, and then eleven, fourteen, eighteen points of damage. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Damage detected. So you I'm do in pain use here. Hero Power, Arcan Golem, and Pirate, Chelsea. right? Yeah. Because then next so. turn you can fit Leroy with Unleash the Hounds or Leroy with Kill Command or Leroy with uh Wait, what what if you just trade yourself see into the three one? Do you need to set up for lethal next turn, right? With right. Oh yeah, that's with, right. You with don't counting, really have to. with counting farseers, farseers or whatever. Yeah. One farseer, then then that's gonna be lethal. If you keep like, use it, one. use it, dude. Use the Arcan Golem. You will have to use the next card. You will draw, so you won't have enough mana for not using the Arcan Golem right now. Okay. And that's not stopping RDU. So, uh, oh, I'm I'm looking for answers, and uh, I don't see one. I sense a soul in search of answers. I don't know. Yeah, Lotop is the only one. Only one thing you can do is Lotop, and that's basically you lose the game. Yeah, that's essentially in this position. It's lose the game because it doesn't do anything. I mean. You might be worried about uh, about kill command, and if you manage to clear the whole board, then you buy yourself a turn because it yeah, commits for eight points of mana. But th here. that doesn't really matter because you can't clear the board. There is one creature left behind, or or two, if you kill the beast. So yep. I mean, you're still dead to unleash no matter what. So yeah, we're gonna play around here. Doggies are all over you. Oh, well, look. kill command. That's gonna he do it. Does deck. he? Oh he no, RDU is yeah. tilting orange. Oh goodness. Well, hopefully orange doesn't feel too tilted by that top deck, but he might be because he was pretty close to lethal. If you look at Tinkers and Eviscerate, he wasn't that far away. If he got one more turn, he might have been able to do it. So that's gonna be game number one for RDU, which is gonna mean he's gonna move on to either his Paladin. Um, or his rogue. Orange uh, still has the entire rogue. lineup available. RDU will switch now to rogue to battle the rogue from Orange, I think. Yeah. Do you know if Life Coach and RDU have been talking about uh, the Paladin list that they're using? I don't know if they're communicating at all. Yeah, they're communi communicating uh, a lot. Okay. But to be honest, Life Coach and RDU have really different play styles. So y you don't see many. Um, Many, um, how do you say that? Uh, the same, you don't see the same points in both lists of those players. Okay, so they're trying different stuff out, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. won't necessarily exactly. tech the same stuff. Like, you even see that in Druid. Uh, an example, RDU is not using no Nourish, right? Where he Life was... Coach is always using them yeah. systematically. I don't know, like, he it's probably the only player that I've seen that sticks to that card all the time in Druid. And sometimes it's really insane when you think about it. Yeah. And sometimes it's really bad. <laughs> well, hmm. RDU will play Rogue, okay, and Orange will play Hunter. So... Hmm. That seems like if Orange is bringing Face Hunter, we might just see a complete 
like a, an exact parallel to what we just witnessed, right? Where the face yeah. hunter wins the game. So if this is a face hunter, Naruto is playing a rogue that's very similar to that of Orange, then we're gonna see a reverse hunter win over a rogue. We'll have to see though what's gonna happen there. It um, depends so much on those like few cards, few tweaks from the rogue. If you play double stab. belcher, the bags are also. And uh, but if if you play double belchers, if you play in example one farseer, one healbot. Those minor tweaks. Yeah, a, a lot of a lot more healing or damage mitigation. The thing is, I feel like if if Orange had had backstab last game instead of having to sap the oh, night juggler, yeah. the game would have been different. I mean, if you can deal with juggler on turn four with a prep sprint and a backstab, it's. I mean, let's be honest here. It's it's got to feel very very weird. Well, he didn't get any point of damage from the knife juggler anyway. Yeah. Right. He got he got three, I think, total. Three. Okay. Yeah. Then he would. He coined he it would out. Still die. Two got he would still die. Three. But uh, yeah. but yeah, you're right. It's like it's it's one of those little things. If you can get a backstab with SI on the board on curve and not have to waste your uh, your entire first four turns on nothing but you know removing the the juggler, things get a little easier. So we're gonna be jumping into the game. We're rogue versus hunter, probably going to be face hunter since we've seen so much of it. Prepare your SM orcs, guys. Oh, control C, control V. Double sprint and opening hand. Oh. oh, he can run really fast. Oh, yeah. Double sprint is gallop. <laughs> wow. Actually, I think it's sprint, prep, sprint. I remember doing that in World of Warcraft. Preparation reset your cooldowns. So you could just oh, sprint forever. Okay. Makes sense. Two points of damage from the Abyss of Surgeons. Value. Well, that's a good drop for next turn. Well, I feel like RDU's hand, although it looked clunky at first, is uh, it, it's improved already. He's got the flurry to deal with the one health minions and the remaining tokens from the creeper, and he's got a farce here to get something down on the board. Still not looking good for RDU. So uh, I might... don't know. I, I I like the farce here play. I mean, when he finds a prep, this entire game gets turned around. You mean the coin, the violet play is gonna yeah. be insane. Well, I think it's all I'm about that sure. prep. Really, I feel like his position is not as bad as we're making it out to be. He's got two violet teachers. He's got himself a good sap. You might get the first violet out right now if you wanted. Then you can get a good blade flurry next turn. Pop the spider, then flurry everything. It is not bad. But it will meet a kill command, I think. You forgot an S. Well, okay, maybe not, because you just draw Unleash the Hound. Unleash the Hound, sorry. So you don't worry about those 1-1s one -ones at all. They even help you. Dear Diary, My name is Orange. Today I went face. <laughs> And Redagger. Yep, I think that makes a lot of sense. Pretty standard line of play, but look at this board now. The Rogue is actually uh, it's in a favorable not good. board position. Of <laughs> course it's not, not good. But... <laughs> That's so weird. Is it that bad, though? Uh, well, know. unleash the Hound's hero power for damage to the face. Right. Or just I, see, I think you Leroy? just keep the Unleash for Leroy later. I mean, I don't think but you're using to, Unleash for right what? Now. Turn 8? So you just drop Mad Scientist Hero Power? You're, yeah. And then you get Explosive Trap, that's 2 more damage. And then you ramp up slowly to that turn 8. Well, if you use... Uh, uh, well, I'm wrong, obviously. Hmm. I was wrong. 11 oh. points of health. Okay, so... You want to kill the whelps, because you don't want to get more value for the Unleash the Hounds. And how much damage do you deal each turn? The well, there's, eight da there's eight damage right now he can play with Unleash Kill Command. On its own, that's eight. So he's almost, actually, yeah, he's almost at the lethal with the Arcane Golem. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see him push. What about Unleash the Hound's um, Kill Command now? That's Yeah, yeah, that's what he has to do. Yeah. To set up the lethal for the next turn's Arcane Golem. I think so. No, he goes for the Arcane Golem now. Six damage. That's not but, too bad. But it gets seven points. Of, no, he goes for. I like damage. I like KC a bit better, honestly. I think uh, kill command is a bit better. Interesting Leroy. tactic. 
still an interesting tactic. Yeah, it's very, uh, it's not like, I don't see that very often, right? So now you, you have to play farcier, backstab, eviscerate face. You have to eviscerate your shredder and try for a ceviche. <laughs> you try for you, the you ceviche. You have to push for damage. You I have know, to win next turn. You so you deal, for, you deal 8 points of damage right this turn, right? You, what if he does find the taunt off of the shredder? Because he gets a ton of 1-1s one out of those spells. Wait, what are we are talking about? He's at 6 points of life. He's dead, I know. That's what I'm saying. He has to pull off a ceviche. That is the only way he wins this game. Oh, man. Is he gonna try? He doesn't. If he would have killed the hound if he did. Right? No, I don't think so. Come on, pull off a ceviche. No, he's not pulling it off. Well... This is a story how Valera's life got flipped, turned upside down. Iron Big Owl? No way! Yeah, sick top deck. Arcing Golem, kill him. Finish him! Well, that's a reverse Hunter versus Rogue play, so both players have won with their Hunters. That's out of the way. They're both equalizing, which means RDU is left with Paladin and Rogue versus Orange's um, Rogue. Druid and Rogue. And, so. Yep. It's very funny that when you think about it, RDU had his starting hand uh, was uh, his starting hand was uh, basically two cards. Yeah, I mean the, you had two sprints which were effectively dead until you find a prep or late game, yeah. and against Face Hunter, it's essentially dead for the longest time. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see a mirror match because um, if you're playing Paladin and you run into Rogue, you're gonna be in a bit of a troublesome situation. Then again, if you queue up into the Druid, you're gonna be good. So. It's going to depend on what they think the other player is going to play. RD is going to play Paladin. Okay, so my uh, idea of going rogue is not exactly what he wants to do. Now I'm now thinking, will Orange go? No, he went with Druid. Okay. So both players making the Sick call. Sick read. Sick read. Yeah, both players kind of... Uh, yeah, RD's read was actually top-notch, but Orange's as well because his opponent didn't go rogue. I just feel like both players would have gotten punished by Rogue if they if they pick this and the opponent goes Rogue. Mm -hmm. um, Rogue well, is generally pretty good against Druid and against Pally, but we'll have to see what RD is bringing. Maybe Life Coach gave him some uh, hyper defensive triple anti kill bot double lay on hands double Farseer deck. That would be Risen Sleeper. Yeah, that that would be what Life Coach plays though. Mm -hmm. That's exactly well, we'll in be, line with what we'll I We'll know in a few seconds. We'll be starting with the game. Okay. So, when you think about Paladin against Druid matchup, what you want to get is those Peacekeepers out. Aldor Peacekeepers, I think, as fast yeah. as possible. Well, Crucible Champions is also something you want to get. Yeah. Well, And Innervate with Coin. Bad. Doctor, Doctor Four at the very least. And I mean, it could, it could be, okay. it could be a Doctor Two. It could be a Doctor Two, but let's be honest. You have to use the Master of Battle to free, game. right? It's not Agent Doctor of Law. All right, that's a Doctor Draw. What I like about the, the line of play he's taking by not innervate coining out a five drop is that it allows him to get a good turn three five drop and a turn four or five drop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's a bit I more agree. consistent in general. Oh, second muscle battle. That doesn't help at all. <laughs> well, you play the I don't know what I'm exci excited. You play the second one on turn uh, on turn four, and then you play the quarter master, and then Druid win? leaves the game. Yeah. That's how you do it. Did you hear? Hmm. Innerraid Belcher. So, Choose Over Champion is going to be very helpful here for RDU. That's very true. Get a bit of value out of that. Tyrion, that's also a crucial draw against Druid. Yeah, needed for the late game. Usually you can contest the mid game fairly effectively, uh -huh. but getting to the late game, you want to put pressure with that. Next turn is Doctor 7 at Doctor 4. No, there's no interface. Interface has been used already. Oh, yeah, right. What I'm talking about. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, if, if, I mean, if you'd kept those two for Doctor, Doctor 4, I think you get punished too severely by a lot of the lineups. Oh wow, that is a great draw here for Orange, getting himself a Shredder. 
think that's better than playing the Jewel of the Claw with the coin because you can coin out your Doctor Soonish if you want to. Doctor You're curving soon-ish. out pretty well. No, you can coin out your Doctor, comma, Soonish. <laughs> <laughs> no, Doctor Soonish. All right, so he goes for the coin Jewel of the Claw play. Uh, feeding some value into a pot. Oh man, what if there were a quartermaster here? Look at the value. That would have been disgusting. Mm. It's well, not too late yet. What about turn six? Is looking bleak for orange or for, for RDU. RDU? For RDU, yeah. but you still you got both presents, so it's it's okay. Second I think crucible. it's bleak, but you can at least play the heal bot for a body. Oh, wow, he finds the Quartermaster. The thing is, do you keep it for turn 8? I think you have to. Yeah, I think you oh, do. Oh, but look at that swipe from orange. But it's it's okay. The swipe is still okay for, for you, because then you know that he lost a whole turn not developing anything. Yeah, but then he plays Dr. Boom. Well... <laughs> And then you wish you'd never taken a step on this earth. I think Ardu might have to use the Quartermaster with Hero Power. That sucks. I'm afraid you're right, though. I think you might just heal bot for a body with a 1 1, so you can go for Muster, Quartermaster next turn, and get much more value out of it. I mean, and Dr. Then you lose sucks. to Savage Roar. Right. But you always lose to Savage Roar anyway. Like. If the we and then <laughs> no, I like... can't say that. I can't say that. Oh man. Now you can't play Masterful Battle with Quartermaster. You you can't. Dear diary, today I went face. So Madness. here's the thing. Tyrion, you drop uh, Tyrion. Do you really have a choice? You're playing into keeper, but honestly, at this point. Your options are so limited. If you had an Aldor Peacekeeper, this would be a different story, but you just don't have one. Well, what about the... Muster for Battle Quartermaster? Yeah, I you think can it's do still that. the best. It's still the best. Yeah. You still have Leon Hands, you still have Tyrion, and now you're not playing into the... Uh... And home... Wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's think. He could go face and win, theoretically. But if he will that. lose if he does that. In but this case, he will yes. get... There's a Druid of the Claw, so that's 6 points of damage. Then you have 9, 12, 19, 21, 23 points of damage. I'm a little surprised that he took five the points. boom bot 5 to the face instead of taking the boom bot, but... And guess... now Orange has to charge? Yeah, that's GG. Yeah, that's, that's everything you have to do. That's all you have to do. Well, that's exact lethal. I was surprised. He could have been. He could have not safe. died if, he, yeah, if he didn't hit the Lotha with his face. But that's gonna be a really punishing decision that he made at the very end there, and he's probably gonna be um, hating himself for it. Probably forgot to calculate there, um, just a little bit, because that was really risky of a play to take five at this point with a seven attack minion, looking you down with two boombots next to one another. But we'll see what uh, what he's gonna do next. I just know that RDU is gonna be able to reuse his paladin if he feels like it, and Orange is mm -hmm. down to one deck. Um, which is he's rogue. got only his rogue, which and is gonna make uh, a little a little bit of a problem for RDU. Yeah, definitely. Now he has to switch the rogue, so it will be a mirror match, and then he has to kill the rogue paladin, which is not an easy task. Definitely not, especially if they get that good uh, a good blade flurry here. I mean, RDU could go for the mirror match if he feels like he's got a bit of an edge here, at least as far as uh, top deck scale goes, but... I mean, Paladin is not horrible, it's just not optimal at all. You're so far... I guess if you get the good shielded minibots and they whiff on backstabs and everything, it can be done, but it's a bit tricky. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well... It's a bit safer. I don't like either. And now... I don't you like coin flips? Yeah. I don't like those, for sure. Who who likes those? Should have stick to playing coin. Amaz <laughs> likes coin flips. At least he used to. Just did took them and run with drag systematically. But yeah. honestly, uh, well, doesn't seem 
Orange plays Belcher in his rogue, right? That also put his puts his rogue into an advantage over RDU. It do, uh, does it? I mean, a sap is very easy. Yeah, it's it almost very feels easy. like it can be a, a drawback at times. It's better remember though, it the old though. times. Yeah. Remember the old times of the Miracle the Rogue when they were uh, they were playing Sengeance? Yep, I remember that. And that that's the same reasoning behind the Belcher, right? Same so mechanic. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Yeah, it makes quite a bit of sense, um, especially if one of them is playing Shredders and the you know the Sludge gets even better at that point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Obviously. Yeah, it, Belcher is is only slightly weaker. Uh, than Sanjin because it's one mana point you lose more to Sap and well maybe the curve is way way worse when you have to Sap on on a five mana on a five mana yeah, yeah exactly yeah. sometimes your curve can get thrown off by that but mm -hmm. that's nothing a prep can't solve in general which is I mean the, the biggest turns in uh, in Rogue come when the prep is top decked at the right time and they get that one key you know the, the turning point in the mid game where they get one spell off with a prep and suddenly the game just becomes so much easier for them. True. Well, good. Battle with the preps and hopefully RD doesn't get double sprint in his opening hand this time. Well if Top Deck say it's you know, prep this time, that's that's okay. I think you want to have a sprint in your opening hand against the rogue, especially if you're going first. I mean second. Yeah, Orange is getting the coin though, so that gives him a bit of an edge in this matchup. You oh, want the coin for a combo has, He has the prep with Sprint. Yeah, and the Loath uh, to deny RDU any chance of unlocking the board after it's been taken over. That is looking grim for RDU. We'll have to see, but they're both running Belchers it seems. I see a Belcher in RDU's Rogue. Mm -hmm. Will he attack? That basically says, I have no free drop. Okay, so he's not attacking. Well, Next turn, you want to prep, I mean, coin, violet, teacher, backstab the agent, kill it with uh, with your dagger, but RDU plays just fan of knives. Yeah, Double, once the card cycle, yeah. but could be punished. Oh, goodness. So, what about... Uh, coin, violet, and pass, I think. Yeah. And then you get an amazing play next turn. Whatever you do, you're getting an amazing play. Pretty much. True. It's looking grim for RDU. Very oh, he's grim. Still, he's still got a good deadly SI here, let's be honest. His ability to contest the board is far from gone. He's got the ability to, to keep the pressure on. He's on four, he's gonna get a Belcher next turn. He's got an SI, a second SI on the back end. So honestly, I feel like as bad as RDU's position is in the long term because he doesn't have a sprint, as soon as he does find one, that might equalize everything. So you have to prep sprint now. And then you play Azure Drake backstep next turn. Yeah, and you're gonna be able to kill that SI7 agent. Mm -hmm. And you have your Fars here to heal for those 3 points of damage you lost to the uh, agent that one turn. Oh man, the options in Orange's hand are just infinite. So many minions, but very few spells. There's one blade flurry and a backstab. He's got limited is, uh, spells to manage with. Which is very good for RDU because he has the blade flurry. Well, I, w I just said uh, there are no spells, but he picked up a deadly. It's going to be pretty meaningful. Very meaningful. Mm -hmm. Gets a really good Van Cleef here. 6-6 six, six Van Cleef. So how do you Me? deal with that? You backstab yeah. it for two points. And backstab eviscerate SI, I guess, on the Blood Mage. Yeah, most likely. Thing is, he's got to be afraid of Blade Flurry, right? I mean, I, I can't see... Well, the Belcher is still okay with that. Yeah. yeah. I really do like this line of play from RDU. I think it's even better than the Eviscerate. Because you can keep Eviscerate for face in a very convincing well, way. You have four a second around. Blade Flurry. And you have mm -hmm. three top decks that, uh, that can fuel that Blade Flurry. Four, actually, because you have Talnos too. You know what? The position that Orange was in was very strong initially, but it feels like it's weakening a little bit. He can't play both minions and remove everything. Mm-hmm. Well, he, he wants to play Palted Shredder this turn. He will, no, he's going to play the, the, the Farseer. But the thing is, he doesn't get to develop the biggest threats that he's got in this deck. 
RDU so, will replay the Belcher and Redagger most likely. Maybe you will use the Eviscerate on the Farseer. Advi oh, okay. So, does that change anything? No, 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 no. If next turn, Farseer, Edvin. I mean, Farseer, Eviscerate, Eviscerate Edvin. Edvin. Yeah. Again, still weak to sap. But he saw, he saw one sap. Oh, never mind. Well, there might be another here. Lothab and Sap are going to put a dent in RDU's ability to counterplay here. Mm -hmm. That second Sap and Lothab together. So now he has to play Belcher and Farseer. Yeah. Belcher and Edwin or Belcher and Farseer. I like the Edwin oh, because it he lives. Has to three, but... He has to play... Yeah. He has to play the Blade Floor next turn. So what he needs to draw... Is a deadly poison or or what else? Wait, four, six, nine point of mana. Even a so fan of knives. Nice, fan of knives, knives is also really great because then you kill the the low tap without even if you won't have any point of damage. So I think Azure Drake trying to Belcher and Fan of Knives here is gonna be Orange's uh, general line of play. Or you know, you just attack into the Belcher, then Blade Flurry everything. I think it's you attack into Belcher and Blade Flurry everything. Yeah. That's a much safer play in general. Well, let's see what he decides to do. I feel like these come down very often to who gets the board, obviously. That's uh, the way Rogue wins nowadays. Uh, yeah, I still like Blade Flurry a lot. And now it's a bit easier for RDU to Blade Flurry everything, but he still needs to find the deadly. He can kill every. He can blade for everything with Tinker. No, he, he doesn't need the, the. He doesn't need the deadly poison. He, he even fit. gets. Wait, to wait, use wait, wait. Backstep, backstep first. Yeah. Would you? Why? To I think a six six huge... Edwin is good enough. Well, you saw two saps, so you basically right. you Back basically set up great. lethal next turn, and now you don't have lethal. Because you know you have an eight eight on board. And he has 13 points of health and use both Farseer. So you got him on five. And you drop top deck a card, whatever it is, you got combo for the eviscerate, and then you attack for one point of damage with dagger and eviscerate. And you kill him. Yeah. And he wouldn't really be able to deal with this. Um, yeah, there's no I guess way. Belcher would have been the only way to stop you, but, but that's you can pretty top unlikely. Deck a sap. Yep. Because you have two left in your deck. Oh man, Orange needs to find a prep here. Or some kind of eviscerate play, and he finds the eviscerate. He's got to feel very relieved here because he had no way to deal with that 6-6 six, six Edwin. Um, but if, even if it had been an 8-8 eight, eight okay, here... He yeah, it, been even with an 8-8, eight, eight, it wouldn't matter. But still, he would have need the perfect draw, which was that, to deal with that um, Van Cleef 8-8. Eight, eight. Print top deck, boys. Nope, that's not it. Then again, that's a bit more damage in RDU's well, favor. Well, you got 6-10, so you can, you can just go face. And hope for what? And hope for next turn win. How? With what? Uh, with a... I think I you can't know. leave the Drake alive, honestly. It feels... I, I mean, it feels awful, but... You want to get your sprint, you want to get your... Second Vile Teacher, I guess? Oh, God. Would I have been lethal? Uh... Four, six, that is. Six. It wouldn't have been lethal, but it would have been very close. And that's the thing. Oh. RD, you can't afford. Like, Drakes are a huge threat. It doesn't look like much, but. Oh, look. Sprint. <laughs> yeah. That's what RD needs right now. Like, never before. He's already played two Blade Flurries, so he's got Fan of Knives left for card draw, but. Ah, that's a good top deck. If he's not dead. He might. There's seven on board, plus another six, seven. He's dead. 14, he's dead to Blade Flurry and everything else, so... It was a fun... I think you... Wait, oh. you attack face! You attack face! Oh, no. man, he... What if you, you Blade Flurry and it killed everything? Yeah, and then you kill it with bombs for 7 points of seven damage. damage, yeah. You might, you might get a draw. <laughs> what if there was a draw there? Well, that's gonna be game. Orange is gonna be taking this one. He can't possibly miss that lethal. That's gonna be... 3 to 1 in favor of Orange here in the series. Yep. RDU's down. L look one at the bombs. Four. Will we see the bombs? We'll if still they see hit it, for right? 7 on the face, I'm going to cry. Nah, nope. they didn't. 
it didn't happen. So Orange gets the three to one lead, well win in effect against RDU, which puts RDU in a really awful position. And you know what? I'm saying awful position, but they're both exactly the same spot in their current groups. Yeah. And uh, like funny anecdote, um, I think RDU when Orange was picked up by Archon told Orange, hey, you know what, you're going to be invited to the next tournaments for the, you're going to be invited to every tournament for the next two months, but your results better be good because <laughs> that's what's going to determine whether or not you keep getting invited in our, you know, scene um, all around the Hearthstone world. So RDU definitely conscious of the fact that results do matter and they're both at the equal same spot in KPL with a one to four uh, match win rate. Uh, that's going to make it equal. I, I think this win was really important for Orange, at least psychologically. Um, just getting out of the zero wins scenario at this point. Yeah, well, both are at one full result right now. Let me look at the, the ranking. Charts, yeah. yeah. And, um, well, Colento can also be one full. He's very close. He's one to three, I think, right and now. And so too. Needs to win. Yeah. What, we have a lot of players at... here yeah. with uh, those rankings that are that feel like those players are much better than their current ratings reflect because this is, after all, a very, very stacked event. This league has some of the best players out there. So obviously some people will end up at the bottom and other ones like Life Coach and Strife Crow would just be crushing at four match wins with the you know, complete four to zero score. Um, it's yeah. bound to happen. Well, it has to happen. It's like a Swiss tournament uh, yep. or Swiss Swiss event. So exactly. someone has to have those O2 drop results or whatever uh, as equivalent of those uh, better results in the league. Uh, but you can't get yourself broken by that um, by the, by those results. So you definitely know, not. Just have to keep pushing. And that's it. All right, so the next match we have today, the last match of the day, actually, is going to be Frezar versus Firebat. Frezar is currently 0-4 to four, um, from Team Fnatic, 0-4 to four currently in the event. And Firebat from Team Archon, everybody knows him, the uh, winner of the last BlizzCon. So, you know, his name's been made. He's currently 3-1. to one. They're going to be facing off against each other. Frezar, again, very important match for him, at least psychologically, wants to get at least one win in KPL. And uh, it's going to be coming right up after the 10-minute break. King Winner Pro League 2015 